Hey everybody, I'm at the state courthouse in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania this morning. I'm supposed to be at in a uh, meeting with community leaders on the south side of Chicago today talking about criminal justice reform, but I had to come here because the Democratic Party is suing me in Pennsylvania. And by the way, tomorrow I'm going to Mineola, Long Island, because they're suing me there too. They're suing me all over the country to try to keep me off the ballot. Um, unfortunately, in some of these states, we're running into judges who are highly politicized and who are, um, who are very, very sympathetic, let me put it that way, to the DNC. Um, and today, the uh, the judge was less than sympathetic to our side. I came down from Boston this morning. I was supposed to get here last night. We had the whole day set aside for my testimony and for the testimony of Nick Brenna, who is our ballot access director, who stayed the night here in Harrisburg. But I was supposed to come last night, but my, my plane got canceled because of weather. So I got up at 4 o'clock this morning, and I made it here by 11.30, but the judge said that because I was late, uh, that I was not going to get a chance to testify. So my testimony, which was critical to this case, was excluded, and she wouldn't even let Nick Rana testify, even though he was sequestered. So he wasn't supposed to be in the courtroom. He was sequestered a few minutes away at a hotel and he could have been there in minutes literally but the judge said because he wasn't there at that time that uh, she wasn't going to let him testify we may lose this case uh, on the state level we will definitely win it on appeal and here's why there's two cases that are exactly on point that are supreme court cases one of them is from 40 years ago it's called Anderson versus uh, Celebrezzi. And that case, you remember John Anderson, some of you, who was an independent who ran against Ronald Reagan. And he joined, he, he announced his candidacy after the conventions. And, and so he was very late, and he was late getting on some state court ballots, who was the deadline had already passed. The deadline passes before the conventions in many states. And so those states said, you can't get on. You missed the statutory deadline. The Supreme Court said, you can't do that. That the 12th Amendment says there's only three requirements for being president. That you're 35 years of age, that you were born here, and that you're currently a citizen. That's it. That the states are not allowed to put additional burdens on that that would create a patchwork across the country that case said there's only one national election and if states are allowed to exclude people arbitrarily from the ballots that it deprives people in every state of the ability to vote in a national election and have their vote be meaningful and have their vote count that's a 40-year-old case, and that case was upheld again by the current Supreme Court in the case in uh, uh, called Trump versus Anderson, which is uh, and no relation with that Anderson. Uh, that was the Colorado case, if you remember, where Colorado tried to exclude President Trump because of his involvement in January 6th, and again. That case cited the old um, John Anderson versus Celebrezzi case and said the states can't do that. You cannot create that kind of patchwork. And uh, the, the pretext for keeping me off the ballot here is a pretext that I put down the wrong state. Yeah, uh, that I, you know, that I claim to be a New York State resident wrongly. But as I explained in an earlier video, I have three potential residents in Massachusetts. I own a house for many years, a family, a home um, in California, where I moved in 2014 with Cheryl. And then I have a rental property in New York, but I've always considered myself a New Yorker. And my car is licensed in New York. My, my bar license, my license to practice law is in New York, not in California 
my law office is in New York. I pay taxes in New York. Um, I, uh, and I've always voted. I don't vote in any other state. And there are many states where the state that you have to put on as your domicile is the same where you vote. For example, in Maine and also New Hampshire, I had to take an oath when I did the ballot access petitions in New Hampshire saying that my domicile in New York was the place I voted. So I didn't have any choice but to put New York for every state because you can't put inconsistent states across the country. And so I'm going to win this. I would say, you know, I, I never tell a, a client this as an attorney, but I'm telling you this, that we have a 100% chance of winning and getting on these ballots. We're going to win the appeals in these cases. And sometimes we have to get by these uh, the lower court judges that, you know, in many cases, like Pennsylvania, are elected judges uh, and, you know, rely heavily on the Democratic Party. And uh, so we will win this. But it's costing us millions of dollars to defend these cases. And of course, that's what the Democratic Party wants. And it's an irony to me that the DNC is meeting right now in, in Chicago, where I was supposed to be, and that everybody's talking about joy and about the need to elect Democrats in order to protect voting rights. And, you know, my father, my uncle, the Democratic Party that they were members of was a Democratic Party that was at the forefront of making sure that every American could vote for the candidate that they wanted to. But today, the Democratic Party is doing the opposite. It's disenfranchising millions of Americans. There, there are a million Americans signed ballot petitions more than any other candidate in history to get me on the ballot. That's never happened before. And there's tens of millions of Americans that want to vote for me. And, the, and they're being disenfranchised. The Democrat, according to the recent Gallup poll, the Democratic Party is 23% of the American electorate. The Republican Party is 25%. But 51% of the Americans consider themselves independent. So the Democratic Party is trying to disenfranchise 51% of the American people. And that is completely inconsistent with the Democratic Party that I grew up with. I don't think my father or my uncle would recognize this Democratic Party for that and for many other reasons for the, the you know the, the complicity with censorship the uh, they were they were part of the Democratic Party that was against war and this Democratic Party is part of the war machine um, the, the the betrayal I would say uh, of the values of, of the affiliation of the Democratic Party with working Americans, with cops, with firefighters, with union people, and its new affiliation with big tech, with Wall Street, with big data, big pharma, and this corrupt merger of state and corporate power. Um, so uh, I'm, a, I'm a little disillusioned with the Democratic Party today, but that's why I, I decided to run as an independent. And um, God bless all of you and, and God bless America.